Recently, astronauts on board the International Space Station performed an EVA to install a pair of deployable solar arrays known as IROSA. This stands for the ISS Rollout Solar Arrays, and they are about to give the station a big boost in energy. This is significant because this technology could have huge use in the future construction of other space stations. And it's got me interested in the company that owns this technology. And yes, you can invest in it too. I'm talking about Redwire Space. Hi, I'm Eric. This channel is focused on the space industry, space companies, and space stocks for any potential buyers. Right now, I believe the space industry is emerging into a much bigger market and that will create more investment opportunities. I want to try to cover all areas of the space industry. So if you like this content or want to know more, or if you want to check out other videos, I recommend subscribing and I will provide you with more information and uh, hopefully you'll learn a little bit more. So Redwire Space is a new company. It was founded in 2020 and it is going to go public through a special purpose acquisition company. Uh, the merger is known as GNPK. So that is the stock ticker you can look for if you want to invest in this company. So Redwire Space was created through a merger of multiple different space companies. And it, is, it has been focused on acquiring other space companies, such as Made in Space, and deployable space systems uh, and they have a lot of interesting technology that is worth talking about so let's go over some key technology that is owned by redwire space first the rollout solar arrays rosa on board the international space station uh, they are known as irosa rosa can be carried in a spacecraft in this case it was carried in the trunk of a dragon spacecraft that was resupplying the ISS. ROSA can be attached to the space station and it extends its flexible arrays in the same way a tape measurer extends out. This is incredibly useful. It allows customers to pack more into a rocket that can later be deployed once in space. ROSA was originally built by deployable space systems which has now been acquired by Redwire Space. And ROSA will be used for more upcoming missions, such as NASA's Gateway Space Station to be assembled around the moon. Maxar is building the power propulsion element, also known as the PPE, to serve as the solar electric propulsion system for the space station. The PPE will be using the rollout solar arrays to generate 50 kilowatts of solar electricity to power its ion thrusters. This will give the Gateway Station the capability to move into a wide range of lunar orbits. Plus, it could even have the capability of transferring to Mars orbit. The PPE will be launched on a Falcon Heavy in 2024, along with the Habitation and Logistics Outpost. These two modules will be the first among several in the construction of the Lunar Gateway. The ROSA technology is being implemented in plenty of other programs too, including the DART mission, the Double Asteroid Redirect Test. This is a NASA space probe that will be launched on a SpaceX Falcon 9. It will demonstrate the capabilities of crashing a spacecraft into an asteroid for planetary protection in case an asteroid was ever on a collision course to, with the Earth. The ROSA design is being used to power the vehicle's solar electric propulsion systems. Axiom Space said they will need rollout solar arrays for the construction of their space station, and Sierra Space signed an in-space manufacturing agreement with Redwire Space, which also has plans to build a space station too. ROSA technology is being used for both space stations and space probes. I like how simple and easy to use the ROSA technology is. 
I believe because of the lowering cost to access space, industry growth will accelerate, which will increase the demand for using this technology. So, as more space stations, space probes, and satellites are being built, Redwire will serve more customers and increase its revenue. By 2025, the company expects revenue to have grown to around $1.4 billion. Redwire also has more interesting technology, uh, such as in-space manufacturing systems after acquiring Made in Space. Made in Space has built a number of 3D printers that can be used in microgravity, including the additive manufacturing facility on board the International Space Station. This is capable of creating new parts or tools rather than waiting months for the next resupply mission to the station. Fiber optics, crystals for camera lenses, and improved laser components can be more easily created in the microgravity of space. Also, there are plenty of more materials that could be constructed in microgravity that might be impossible to make on Earth. Bioprinting capabilities are also being worked on. In a microgravity environment, human tissue and organs can be 3D printed without them collapsing on themselves. That would otherwise happen on Earth due to gravity. If this technology proves to be promising, it could revolutionize the medical world. All of these projects could serve an industrial use on Earth. In-space manufacturing could prove to be profitable with more affordable launch vehicles coming online, such as the Starship. The lowering cost to space will help in the creation of massive orbital manufacturing facilities. And the demand to create these bioprinting or material manufacturing facilities in space would be huge. But the creation of mega space stations can't be done with humans alone. This is where the need for robotic assembling comes into place, and Redwire Space is working on the technology. The Arconaut is a project designed for use in building large scale structures in space. This space robot uses a built-in 3D printer to manufacture parts that can be assembled together in the construction of large structures. NASA has helped fund this program and a demonstration mission is planned to be conducted in 2023 under the name OSAM-2, On-Orbiting Servicing Assembly and Manufacturing. OSAM-1 is a similar mission only being conducted by Maxar, which will assemble a antenna reflectors and manufacture a composite beam in orbit. OSAM-2 will test manufacturing spacecraft parts in orbit and will build, assemble, and deploy its own operational solar array. OSAM-2 will be launched on a Falcon 9 rocket, part of a rideshare mission. This is a key development in the construction and manufacturing of space infrastructure. To summarize, there is already demand and use for red wire space products and this demand continues to grow. Affordable launch costs have allowed Redwire to benefit, but if in-space manufacturing really starts to prove to be commercially viable, for example, 3D printing human organs for those in need on Earth, then there will be huge economic demand to create more space stations to make these valuable products, which means Redwire technology will be used for these space stations. Like the need for ROSA to provide solar energy or robotic assembling to construct these space stations. Also, there will be plenty of need for in-space 3D printing to build other parts and tools for space station construction. If off-world industry proves to be valuable, then the demand to decrease launch cost will accelerate more, allowing even more affordable rockets to enter the market, making room for larger profits. I love how Redwire space is diversified over many different areas in the space sector. There is a lot more technology that I just didn't have time to talk about, 
but I plan on talking more in future videos. Redwire is serving leading space missions, and I see this company to continue to grow. There is so much potential here. This is why I'm invested, and I am excited to see this business expand among the growing space economy. And I plan to follow them more and uh, cover more of Redwire Space in future videos. If you enjoyed this video, I plan on covering more of the space industry. I talk about companies like Virgin Galactic, Momentous Space, Rocket Lab, and I plan on talking about many more companies. So if you want to know more, please subscribe and I'll provide you with more content on the space industry and space stocks. So recently I've been debating whether or not I want to change the name of this YouTube channel. Right now it's being called the Space Stock Exchange, which it does focus on a lot of uh, stocks that are involved in the space company. But I also want to cover more of the space industry, which is why I have been thinking about changing the name to the Space Strategist. And I would like your feedback. Do you want to keep it at the Space Stock Exchange or do you want to be do you want the channel to be known as the Space Strategist? Uh, please share your thoughts and opinions. That would be nice. Please comment, like, share, and subscribe, and I hope to hear back from you soon. Thanks.